five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And this is The Ramble, and we go from now until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, wait a minute, let me turn on my lights here. I, I see, I, that's what I look like without lights. And then I add the lights. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Um, and there we go. See? See how much better the picture is? See? Here we are, 4K. All right. Yeah, anyway. Hello. Hello, how are you? What's happening? What's new? Hmm? Okay. Hey, listen. Uh, we got to, uh, first of all, we should probably look at the map tonight. Uh, it hasn't changed all that much. Uh, still the same horrible situation. That, what? That's not Five what we want. You know still? something? It's funny. I, I, I do this. I go say screen and then, yeah, well. Yeah, I, when I was signing on tonight, also my uh, the thing that plays all the music and the promos and stuff wasn't working like it was supposed to. So, yeah, I give up. I give up. It's not. It's not fun, folks. It's not fun. Let me turn up the air conditioning just a little bit there. Anyway, um, so that wasn't working, and then that happens every night to me, and I do click on that. Oh well. Anyway, let's take a look. At the, at, at the map. There it is. There, there is a dreaded map. That is the map we always show you every night here. That is a map of the uh, world. And then all the little dots are the places where there's coronavirus. And we're not even, and uh, let's see here. And then uh, over here at the very top, okay, see that? See where my arrow is? Uh, that's the total confirmed in the world. We're, we're over 55,800,000, okay? In fact, it's 803,416, to be exact. That's total confirmed. Total uh, deaths, global deaths uh, are, and uh, you can look at it here, or you can, I can just, I can bring it up like that, right? You can just see that number. Wow. That's a glaring number. That's the amount of people that are no longer here as a result of the coronavirus. You know, that little flu that we were told we were going to get? It was nothing more than a, just a common flu. We go to the U.S., here's the total here. Uh, we're uh, at 1,712,21,479 total confirmed. Uh, and uh, as far as deaths are concerned, right now it's 101,597. Uh, Brazil is doing terribly. Look at Brazil. Look at that death number. Uh, they have 438,238. And they say that this number, uh, uh, it won't hit its worst. It won't hit its worst until about two weeks from now. Here we are, wait a minute, let me, I hate it when this thing does that. This is a very, John Hopkins, shame on you, badly constructed. Anyway, um, if you look, look at that, look at that. This is March, okay, this is March uh, 17th. This is now, look at that. And it's going sky high. It, and it doesn't look like it's gonna recover. Russia uh, looks like it is still going up as well, but they only have 4,142 deaths, if you believe that number. I mean, we, you know, we, we, all these numbers are numbers we rely on getting from uh, various sources that, uh, like, that you hope are telling you the truth. Uh, I think Russia is lying and so is Florida, okay, all right? Uh, and uh, so is so is Georgia. So are a lot of states that don't want to say how bad it really is. All we know is that in Alabama right now they have run out of ICU beds. Something we never did here in New York because we were ready for it, or we weren't ready for it, but we hedged our bets about it. 
but they they ran out of ICU beds, and they're having to send people by ambulance, I think, to another state to a hospital in order to take care of them there. So that's what's happening, folks. That's what's happening. Okay. All righty. I, uh, I, tonight I had a choice. I, I could either could have either played an interview I did with, uh, with Larry Bubbles Brown, which I'll probably play tomorrow night, or I could talk to you here about this. Um, by the way, I'm feeling much better tonight. For some reason, that really was uh, allergies. It, it, uh, I felt much better today. But the thing I don't have, I still have a problem with is the, uh, I might have to run off to the bathroom at some point here. Hey. Eh? Uh, but I'll take it easy and hope that I settle down here. I take ibuprofen to prevent me from having these surges of having to uh, pee because of my um, situation. So anyway, oh, something else crashed on me. God, things are crashing like crazy tonight. Everything wants to crash, right? Right. So uh, um, we... Um, but let me just uh, do something here, and we will continue. All right. All right. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, I had something else crash on me here. It doesn't matter, you know, but I just have nothing. But anyway, I was going to have Larry Bubbles Brown, uh, uh, an interview I did with him, and us talk together about, you know, various uh, things. That will be on tomorrow night. Uh, they're, they're evergreens. I don't have to do them right on the day I recorded them, okay? Oh. But I wanted to talk about something tonight because I, I suddenly was hit by something today that I felt that might be of interest to you and might, I don't know, inform you. Uh, years ago, I worked in Houston, Texas. Uh, if I had to say what was the most racist thing city I ever worked in, I would have said Houston, Texas. Um, there were two parts of town. There was the black part of town. That's where Jack Bishop lived. And there was the white part of town. And that's where Alex lived. And occasionally I would have Jack Bishop come over to visit me. And everybody in the neighborhood would stare. And then he would invite me to come over and see him. And I would go over to his neighborhood and everybody over there would stare, saying, what is the white kid doing in our neighborhood? Uh, when my wife and I, Ronnie, would walk down the street with Jack in Houston, Texas, she would, of course, be in the middle, and we'd be on either side of her. That's the way two males accompany a woman. And as we were walking down the street, a black guy on one side and a white woman on the other side, the reaction was, to say the least, bizarre. I mean, the stares we got, you know, and everybody trying to figure out which one she with. Is she with a black guy? Is she with a white guy? Is the white guy a beard for her because she's going out? You get the picture. So with that kind of thing going on, I always looked upon Houston, Texas as the most racist town I had ever lived in. Um... I'd come from the San Francisco Bay Area, so, so did Jack. We were both very naive people who thought the whole world was like it was in San Francisco, California, where there was racism. I mean, there was a black section of the town. There were white sections of the town. There was a kind of racism, but it wasn't the hateful racism that you got in a place like the South, okay, and Houston, Texas. But... Um, I got to tell you, I, I did find that maybe I was wrong about San Francisco, that maybe it was more racist than Houston, Texas, because I found that southern states didn't think they were racist. They thought they were paternal towards their black population. I'll give you an example. I love to give this example. I've, told, I've said it before, and it's worth saying again. I had a program director at the radio station I was at. One day he comes up to me. Uh, up to the studio while I'm playing a record, and he says to me, you know, there's the nicest little old nigger lady downstairs. His words, not mine, as Mike Waltz would say. Uh, his words, not mine. Uh, and I'd never heard nice and nigger in the same sentence. I had always, again, with 
my father taught me to hate that term. He said, uh, he said, you know what it is? It's a word that describes a black person who just left the room. Okay. Um, so uh, I, you know, I always thought of Houston as being kind of really racist, but there was a certain paternalism in that racism, like, well, we don't hate our black folk. You know, they just have to have their place, and we have our place. Well, that was the South. And in a way, you, you couldn't forgive it, but you could accept it because it had been the way things had been forever. Okay, I quit KILT in Houston, not because we're on bad terms or anything. I just wanted to advance my career, and I figured the way to go was talk radio. And there was an opening at a station in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I said to myself, well, maybe I should go to Minneapolis, you know? Uh, and I, I auditioned for the job, and they gave me the job. Come work for us. We're doing a talk station out of uh, Minneapolis. Well, actually, it was, I think it was in St. Paul, really. The two cities are just right across the river from each other. The station was in St. Paul. I lived in Minneapolis. I had a place in Minneapolis. And I started working there. Now, I won't go into what happened with the, with the station and why I left. I think if you want to hear that, go listen to my uh, Life in the Passing Lane, and I tell the full story about what went on there and why I left Minneapolis. Uh, but what, uh, uh, among the many things that happened in Minneapolis was I got to know a black guy who had an organization called the... Uh, Oh boy, I had the name on my on my uh, had the name uh, 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 written in my sketched in my brain. It was called the uh, the Black Patrol. That was it, the Black Patrol. And I said, "So what do you guys do?" And he says, "Well, we patrol the black neighborhood on Plymouth Avenue. Plymouth Avenue was the main drag uh, in the ghetto, okay? And uh, they said we patrolled it every night." And I said, well, don't the cops patrol it? And they say, not in the way we do. They just, you know, they don't do much of anything. They just make sure really we stay in our place. And I'm thinking, now this is Minneapolis. And when I left Houston, I went, thank God I'm going to the, a northern state. I'm going to see no racism at all, right? And especially in, uh, in Minneapolis, which was known for being one of the most democratically progressive states in the country. They had a thing there, a party called the DFL, the Democratic Farm Labor League, and um, or Farm League or whatever. And um, they uh, were very, very, very liberal. So I figured I'm going to Minneapolis. Minneapolis is completely, you know, the opposite of, of Houston. So I said, okay, I'll go on your black patrol with you one night. He asked me if I wanted to go, and I said, I'll go with you, see what it's all about. And that one night changed my whole opinion about racism, about the North, about Minneapolis, uh, about people who say they're not racist, because what I saw were like, in one case, a car driving down Plymouth Avenue at about 11 o'clock at night with a guy with a gun in one of the seats, wasn't the driver's seat because the driver couldn't do this, shooting out the window at people. Shooting out the window at people. Okay? All right? And he said, it's like this every night. He says, and what we're here to do is to protect the black community because the cops won't come in and stop this. We have to stop it. And we have to put the whites on notice. They come into our neighborhood and do this. There's going to be trouble. He said, these cars drive down the street. They see a black woman. And the first thing they yell out the car is, how much? Thinking that every black woman in the, in the ghetto is a prostitute. He said, this is what we're protecting our neighborhood against because the police won't do anything about it. 
I said, do you complain to them? He says, we complain all the time. It's like blowing smoke out our ass. And I spent that night with them and watched what they did. They stopped a couple of cars who were making trouble. There were literally white cars constantly patrolling through that neighborhood, either shooting out the window or stopping women and saying how much or uh, harassing some people for various and sundry reasons. You know, it was just, it's just terrible, just absolutely terrible. Uh, and I suddenly realized once and for all that I was in a town that was more racist than the town I had come from, which was, you know, the one thing about Houston was if it was racist, it was honest about its racism. Oh, yeah, that's the way we are. I mean, I, one night I remember I had a caller, and he, he used the word uh, nigger. And I said, please don't use that term on my show. He says, oh, I'm sorry. I said, why do you use that term? He says, that's what I've always called them. I don't mean anything by it. I like the niggers. But I, I, you know, it was what I was taught to refer to them as. I guess just like in those days, I was taught to call them Negroes, which today is not, it's not considered bad, but it's not considered very proper. Uh, so there was a certain kind of like, you know, and, and the guy said to me, he said, you know, he says, I'll take your advice and try to not use that term. I said, yeah, no, use Negro instead. And he said, okay, fine, you know. But in the North, I, you know, here's Minneapolis. They try to act like they're the most progressively liberal people in the country. And this kind of thing is going on in their town. And the cops are doing nothing about it. So I hear this story about, I guess his name is George Floyd was his name, uh, a black uh, person who, again, you know, this story has happened over and over and over again. No matter how many times it happens, it keeps happening. Nobody does anything to stop it. The police departments don't police their police departments. Um, this guy, for uh, and and he was uh, he had gone into a I don't know some kind of store or something like that, and he given the guy a twenty dollar bill. Turns out. It was counterfeit. Now, this happens to people all the time. You probably, in your lifetime, uh, since you spend money, have passed a $20, $20 counterfeit bill. And because nobody checked it, you didn't know it. At uh, one time, I caught it beforehand. I Well, actually, I caught it when I went into a store, and they said, oh, this is counterfeit. And I said, really? And they showed me, and I looked at it, and I went, by God, it is counterfeit. And he said, yeah. I said, well, give it back to me, and I'll give you a real 20. And they go, no, we can't give it to you. I said, but I want it. I, it's my counterfeit bill. I can take it home, put it up on a wall, and go to everybody, look, hey, counterfeit bill. Um, they said, no, we can't do that. So I was out 20 bucks. But I was only out 20 bucks. This guy is out his life because the cops then come, and... They think he's trying to pass a counterfeit bill, and what ensued was an altercation of one sort or another to the point where the cop then put his foot on the neck of this guy, and this guy is repeatedly saying, you're choking me, you're choking me, you're choking me. This went on maybe 10 minutes. Kept saying, you're choking me, much like what happened here in, um, in Brooklyn, where a guy said the same thing. Hey, you're choking me. I, stop it, you're choking me. Had him in a chokehold, and he died. So, the, you know, every other police department should have been put on notice after that situation, and that happened in really liberal Brooklyn, okay? All right. So anyway, um, uh, it, it, uh, uh, it, they, they choked him to death. They choked this guy to death. And um, riots have ensued. And I saw this story today, and I went, I'm not surprised, you know. I'm not surprised that it's Minneapolis. Well, is everybody surprised it's Minneapolis? Because the Minneapolis I knew was incredibly racist, you know, and probably continues to this day. Because this guy, this cop, uh, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna try him here on the air. But this cop who's been accused of choking him to death, of choking uh, uh, George Floyd is his name to death has had over the last 20 years something like 21 different 
um, uh, things against him for various infractions of his duties. And uh, he, they knew he was trouble, and they didn't do anything about it. And now the problem is they're not doing anything about it. They're slowly getting around to it. The federal government has had to jump in and say, okay, let's take a look at this thing. Because the state attorney general went, oh, I don't know if we should prosecute or not prosecute. <laughs> Meanwhile, i got to hand it to the mayor of Minneapolis, a real stand-up guy who has been giving these, these press conferences in which he, his humanism is just, he's exuding humanism. But anyway, that's, uh, you know, that's the story of Minneapolis. So if you think that the North is a better place to be, uh, I got news for you. The fact is the North is just as racist as the South. The only thing is, in those days, the South at least was honest about it. They made no bones about it. Yeah, that's the way it is. That's the way we've always been. That's the way we'll continue to be. And end of story. So um, I'm not surprised that this happened. But how many more times does this have to happen? How many more times does this have to go on before people finally say, listen, this has got to stop, you know? And when are we going to start prosecuting these cops heavier? I mean, this guy, if he's found guilty, should be given the same sentence that anybody would be given if he killed somebody, because he did kill somebody. But we'll wait and see. I'm not, I'm not making a judgment here. But I do say that if the man is suspected of being the person, then he and these other three other cops that were involved in this should all be put on trial, and they should have to defend themselves, you know. So anyway... Hey, our lines are open, folks. I just opened them up, so if, you, <clears throat> if you're looking to call the show, I guess you can do it, right? Let's see if Brian Neary beats everybody tonight again. He loves to beat people. I mean, not in the literal sense. Uh, but I'd like to know also what you think about this uh, tonight. Uh, well, our lines are open. Where is everybody? Nobody's calling. Hmm. Well... That's uh, weird. Usually we get people calling. Oh, there we go. Well, here comes Phil Meyer. Uh, he's, uh, he was on the uh, first couple of people last night. So uh, you take that background off, will you? It doesn't look good. I don't it know. It looks terrible. It's near, not, you haven't got a green screen, so it doesn't really look terrific. All right. Uh, are we having trouble again tonight with this? Oh, boy. People call, and then I bring, try to bring them in, and they, I can't get them in. Let's see here. There goes Rob Alfano. He's screwed up. Uh, Charlie Wallace is screwed up. Rob Alfano is screwed up. Okay, okay. Tony Magno is screwed up. Uh, let me hang up a second here, All right. Phil, and we'll, 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 we'll try loading the Skype again. I don't know. Who knows what's wrong with Skype tonight? Uh, we had this trouble last night, too. And uh, I don't want that. That's not what I want. Where is it? Oh, there it is. OK, now we'll bring, uh, we'll bring Skype up. There's, there he is, frozen, Phil. Um, you know, come on. There we go. Now. Are we on? Okay, we're opened up. Okay, let me see. Okay, start calling, and we'll see what happens. Okay, okay, here comes here comes uh, Rob. Okay, hello, Rob. How are you? Hey. Yeah. Let me tell you, what a nightmare calling you every night. I get like 20. Well, I don't know what the problem is myself either, to be honest with you. I just hit the uh, Tony Magno. Do you Charlie see it? Wallet, it yeah, it's it's happening. It's a problem. It's a Do real. Do you see it on your end? Oh yeah. What happens is somebody like Charlie calls, Brian Neary calls, and then it goes away. Okay, you guys. Uh, oh wait a minute. No, oh, no, I can't do it. Can't do it. Okay, let me now. Hold on a second. Let me try and bring people in here by 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 calling them. Okay. So I'll call Tony and I'll add him. Okay, now when I do that, 
Okay, there we go. And now we go, we got, we, uh, we got Brian Neary. Wait a minute, let me get rid of Brian Neary. Hold on a second. Brian, hang up a second, will you? Uh, hang up? Uh, yeah, I got a problem here. Oh, okay, bye. Yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, here, where, where's the group of people? Here we go. All right, is this them? Is this the group of people? Come on, join call. Okay, video call, yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now I need uh, need. Uh, let's see here. I need uh, uh, Charlie. You should call. Let me see here. Uh, here. Here comes Phil Meyer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, Phil. And there's Tony. And there's Jeff. Let me. Let me. Um, let me see here. If we get. Um, there we go. Here comes Charlie. What happens is as soon as I try to bring one person in, then everybody else gets to come in. Uh, yeah. Are you there, Charlie? No, we didn't get Charlie. Hold on a second, folks. Let me call Charlie Wallace. Add. Okay. Come on, Charlie. Give me a call. Uh, we'll, uh, I'm, I'm calling him. So he should. Oh, well. He's not, uh, Charlie, add, okay, okay, it says Charlie, Charles Wallace is unavailable, okay, well, anyway, uh, well, let me see here, where is this, uh, let me see, six, there we go, there's, uh, there's everybody that we normally have, okay, here, uh, Charlie, it was missed again, Oh boy, this is amazing. This is just amazing. Um, here we go, Charlie. How your okay. Skype account got get gets corrupted? I I don't think it's corrupted. I think something happened. Oh, th this is interesting now. But I'll explain it to you. Until well, first, I want to get Tony in here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -da, I put him in the sixth spot. Uh, Tony is going to be webhead. Okay, there we go. All right. Do you notice what uh, are you having something happen on your um uh, on your um Skype? I've got 5 people on Skype now. But I've got 5 on the screen at the same time. No, I don't have that. Yeah, I normally, have no normally we've had 4. Now we have 5. You know what? The, what I think they're doing. I have an advanced version of uh, of Skype, so they keep upgrading it, and it's it's all beta, you know. And I think what's happened, and why I'm getting five people on the screen at a time, is they're trying to compete with Zoom. Okay, coming to a coming to a, a Skype near you. Well, hello everybody. We finally got you on. It only took me ten minutes. You know, so how are you? Good, good, good. Phil's in a coma. Did you get my email, Alan? Yeah, I did. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Yeah. Because I just, I came in and I was doing some stuff and then I saw that and I went, I haven't got time to listen to it, but I will. I'm sure it's wonderful. They're it's really the, short little. Yeah, because everything you do is wonderful for us. It's different. It's, I have all these new, because I'm using Adobe Audition now. Yeah, yeah. And I have all these presets with these different sounds. Yeah. So this is more rock and roll kind of sound. I, I use Adobe Audition myself. I do. You, did you go get the whole no thing, or did you just get that one thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, here comes I, Brian Neary, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see here. He should go in that first spot and be live now. Let me see here. Did we did we bring him in? No, no. Oh boy, this is, this is, well, I don't see it. I don't see that he called Brian Neary. Son of a bitch. Brian, I'm You're very telling me that the gap that was unavailable. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. This is a, this seems to be a real problem here. No? Started about a month ago, at least for me. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Oh, Ray Renati just called and I brought him in. Oh, this is. This is a cluster. Fuck. Uh, let me see here. Um, 
Where do I go? I'm trying to... Okay, Ray Renati. Let me call Ray. Let me add him. Okay. Let's see if he can then get in, if he picks up. Um, and here comes Kevin. Okay, Kevin, are you there, Kevin? Yes, you know what I'm getting? I'm getting all the people on my Skype screen at the same time. I'm not getting the little circles up at the top. Huh. Guess what they're trying to do, folks. Are you there, Brian? Yeah, I'm here. Brian, are you there? Maybe it's your version of Skype, this beta version that you have that's causing all these issues. Yeah, Brian is not on the Skype call. The Brian is not on the Skype call, and I have no way of getting to Brian. Let me see here. It should have made him Brian, uh, Brian Neary. Okay, here we go, and I will add him. Let's see what happens if he picks up. I'm calling him. Uh, see if he if he picks up. Let me let me. Um, been weird the last two nights huh it's been weird the last two nights i call and it's immediately saying gabnet denied call mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh, last boy. night when you called me mm -hmm. it looked like zoom it didn't look like regular skype right that's what we've got here it's like reversed yeah thank but you now tonight yeah it looks like the old skype so it's got the circles Oh yeah. well, I don't. I don't have that. Yeah, it's but, weird. Brian, I tried to call you, but uh, apparently you're not uh, picking up here. Oh boy. I. I yeah, he's probably confused like I was because I called I, back. Yeah. And for some reason it went through. Yeah. Let me see here. Bum, 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 and I want to put you down there. I just don't. I don't like to confuse things and keep trying to call. You know. No, yeah, I no, I, 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 I understand that. But I, I can call you. Yeah. Um, Brian wrote me, says he can't get back on. Tell him to try it again. Okay. Tell him to try it again. I, I, I've been trying to call him, or just tell him to wait for me to call him. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. Let me see here. I'm going to try again. Brian Neary. There we go. And I'm going to go add. Okay, calling Brian Neary. Brian, are you getting a call from us? Responded to my uh, page. Yeah, yeah. God, you know, this is terrible. This is just ghastly. Uh, he said, I can't get back on. That could mean a couple of things. That could mean he has something else to do and he can't get on or that he's having... An no, issue. It's, it's probably, it happened when I answered. I don't know what the hell happened. Because yeah. when I answered, he went off. Well, that's the uh, new Twitter filter uh, uh, working in reverse and keeping Democrats off of the uh, program. Yeah, well, well, what, 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 that, what happened so. to you, Ray? What you, where's your picture? I see. Oh, well, there it is. I oh, there it. it is. Okay. All right. All right. I see. Uh, I'm I'm confused now because what I'm looking at is a Zoom type screen. All right. Yeah, that's that's strange. What the hell's going on with this? Thing? Is it enough, by the way, Skype? If you're listening, to make me go to Zoom. <laughs> you know, and one night I may try Zoom and just put the uh, the uh, the link up on uh, on Facebook page and and try it there because this is. This is not good. Now I tried to call. I tried to call Brian Neary, and um, I am, uh, you know, uh, as much as I try, he never seems to call me back or answer the thing. Brian Neary. Okay, there's Brian Neary. Okay, uh, Brian Neary. Add. Okay, now we're calling Brian Neary. And let's see if it. Uh, He's rebooting, so he'll try when he uh, when he gets back in. Oh, said. okay. That's probably let, tell him to let us know when. Anyway, hello everybody. We'll leave Brian up at the top as a still. Uh, Good night, everybody. Yeah, I mean, he he obviously yeah. he, he got in at some point. Yeah. You know, um, who knows what this is? But I'm sure by tomorrow they may send me a new upgrade. 
that will be completely different and solve whatever problem we're going through right now. What this is doing is this has a name on there for everybody, which is like Zoom. I've got uh, uh, seven people on the Skype screen like wow. Zoom. All right. Uh, and uh, the picture's flashing a lot. So, you know. Um, yeah, that only happened to me yesterday when you called me when I was trying to get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I'm back to the because I just loaded Catalina yesterday. Oh that, well, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm probably going to be so far behind on uh, Apple because I refuse to upgrade to Catalina because well, I, I was leery about doing it, and I'm afraid I, I'm not sure if I should have. I. Uh -huh. The what? major problem I'm having with Catalina is that my um, uh, what is it, Logitech camera uh, is not compatible. The software wasn't compatible, so I'm running it without software. Yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, the point is that that uh, they, um, uh, you know, they they what they do is they do these things, and nobody really tests them out. No, hey, you know, pants. You have the same camera as me. If you upgrade to uh, Catalina, you're going to have a problem. No, I put. I didn't a, have a problem. A, 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 no, I didn't have a problem with another machine that I do, did have Catalina on. Oh, at, with that same, uh, what is it, Logitech 920, 930, whatever he, it is? Yeah, that's what I had over. It was in the other studio. But yeah. uh, the reason I I upgraded the, uh, the server here to Catalina, and the reason I didn't do it, I had to reverse it was because it wasn't reading it on the network, which was some early problem. Here comes Brian Neary, and here he comes, and I'm sure he will be with us. Are you there, Brian? Yes. Okay, turn on your camera. There we go. Uh, this is, you know, this is <laughs> Skype, you know, and it, believe it or not, in a couple of days, a couple of days, this will be just fine. But right now, they're trying to make it look and work like Zoom. Are you ready for that? So, and, and, and here's where they made another mistake. With Zoom, if you, it, like I have Rob Alfano here, his name would be down in the left-hand bottom corner where it doesn't sit in the middle of the picture or whatever. Here, they've got it up above in the center so that it's about midsection. With Rob, so it really interferes the pic with the picture, you know. What else can I do? Can I? Um, no, it doesn't. I can mute him. Well, I could do that before though. I, I remember. Yeah. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? Well, thanks for thanks for being here. We gotta go now. <laughs> Did you hear what I was talking about with uh, Minneapolis? Yeah. Yes. Does that surprise you? Well, there's a sale at Target on burning police cars. Phil, this is nothing so to my, joke about, yeah. okay? My, my Quite friends, frankly, uh, and I don't blame. I'm, I don't, I'm ashamed I, to be a white person right now. I'm ashamed to be a white person too. But, but, here's the thing I don't get. Okay, number one, I get why they burn police cars. Hey, look at what a policeman did to a, to a black guy, who was, uh, you know, had a, a counterfeit bill on him. Which he wasn't trying to pass. He probably just got it and, you know, could have come out on ATM for all we know. But it, it, is, it does having a counterfeit bill come with a death sentence? I don't think no. so. Okay. Even the guy that took it from the liquor store said he didn't even, re, he, if he had known that that was going to happen, he wouldn't have called the cops or his boss. Yeah. Uh, he said he didn't. He didn't. Uh, he, he thinks that the guy didn't even know he passed it to him. A title, a title, a counterfeit bill is a Title 18 crime. Phil, and, uh, it, 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 yeah, is a title is is the Doesn't punishment matter. for a title, whatever uh, offense, uh, 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 capital punishment. No, of course oh, well, not. Well, it was in this case. Now the cop that had his knee on the guy's neck. Oh, Phil, don't try to excuse that behavior. The cop, Come the on. The cop had his knee on his neck, telling him to get in the car, and he's saying, "I'll get in the car." What and the it, fuck? And then he, he's saying, I, "You're choking me. You're choking me. You're choking me. You're choking me." Over and over again, repeatedly for three or four minutes, 
until he finally passed out and died. Don't make an excuse for it, Phil. With you, his hand the cops his aren't making an excuse for it. Boom. Yeah, you shouldn't assume. The no, guy, the hand, <clears throat> there's nothing to assume. There's enough video. There's every, enough fucking yeah. video. Think what I'm going to say. It's disgusting. I know what I'm, you're going to say. You're going to say the most idiotic thing we can imagine. Go ahead. Okay, the guy had his knee on his neck for eight minutes. He's also had 16 complaints over his 19-year uh, career. And Klobuchar, at one point, I guess she was a prosecutor in some fashion, declined to prosecute the, uh, the accusations that he was cleared from. Or he wasn't even cleared. They just didn't prosecute. So there, there's, there's bad cops out there. Uh, everybody deserves due process. Phil, this has happened far too often. I mean, it even happened here in Brooklyn in New York, the same you, kind of incident. You accuse somebody of a crime, they get due process. That's correct. Our and I'm press. I'm I, but what, we, what we're doing is we are all because we saw the video and it wasn't like there were things outside the frame we didn't see going on or whatever. We saw the, hold on a second, Phil. We saw the video, so we're all witnesses to the crime. Several videos, not just one. <laughs> oh, yes, Brian, Brian. Kevin, and Kevin is exactly right. Because it's, there's the video that everybody's been seeing, which is that one angle from the back where the cops are telling them to get one side or the other, but there's the other angle from the person walking across where you see three people on top of them. And There's the also a building video, a building video that shows him getting out of the car and cooperating. He's probably guilty, but the thing is, uh, you know, he, you know, if he goes to jail, it's because he was tried by a jury of his peers. It's not because no, no, he was no, 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 no. If, if somebody were walk up a bunch of uh, people on GapNet, if somebody walked up to Trump and shot him, do you think they're going to let the guy go home? Do you think they're going to let the guy go and wait till they get? Due process? Well, I saw something uh, today. Yes or no? Uh, no, of course not. Okay. So what's the difference between this? Well, there's no difference. It's just that uh, I don't I don't know what else is going on in the background with this thing. I'm not trying to justify it. You know, uh, yeah. there there's some pretty uh, compelling uh, video. Uh, and what happened was terrible. Regardless of right and wrong, it's terrible that the guy was killed. And uh, I think that uh, the family will get their day in court. And uh, this guy was, he and the others were immediately fired. So, uh, you know, I don't know what their union uh, has uh, as far as accusations uh, and, and, you know, whether he has to go to jail immediately. There might be. It might be some uh, union kind of thing. But, union shouldn't have anything to do with this. Yeah, well, you know, maybe they have a way of bailing them out. I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah. you know, pe people get in shootings. They got to investigate it. Tony keeps having a problem. Yeah, he's Tony. Tony, are <laughs> you there? See, we, we got him frozen he here. Left. Huh? Skype said Tony left. Let me just call him and see if I can get him on here. There we go. Real? Okay. Here we go. I'm going calling Tony Magno. Uh, so we don't have a uh, we have a freeze frame of him there, which looks like oh, one here of his two arrest pictures. You know. Okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, and there you go. I had to call you, right? Yeah, I'm having problems with it. I know. I'm having problems with it. Skype's having problems with it. They may as well, at the bottom, put phony Zoom as a logo. You know, uh, because, I mean, I wish I could show you guys. Uh, wait a minute. Well, I, well, I don't want to do it. But wait a minute. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Here, look. See what I got here? Can you see? Can you see? Can you see that picture? Um, sort of. Yeah. yeah, but you can you see? I mean, I have all those anyway. Five. Huh? Is it five? And no, I have, I have, I have, I have a, 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 eight people on the screen at one time. Right. None of those. How, how, how can we keep forgetting Tony's name then? <laughs> oh, I won't forget it now because I got all these names there. Oh, now okay. Yeah. Well, maybe you're using Zoom and we're all using Skype. <laughs> Tony got a haircut. 
Well, yeah, my mother's, well, my wait mother's a friend, I, 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 uh, girl came over the house. She, my mother got a haircut, and so did I. Only I, 15 I, bucks. I, I can show you what it looks like, folks. Even the audience can see it, and you'll have to look at your screen. But here, oh. here's what I'm getting now on Skype. That's the new Skype. That's Skype. That's Skype Zoom is what it is. But am I right or am I wrong? Are, are you guys getting to see the picture yet? It's a, we, there's a lag usually. There it is. There yeah. it is. See it? Clean now. Yep. Does that look like it's trying to be Zoom? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I had last night. That's what you had last night. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let me move this back over yep. here. There we go. All righty. Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I have a... I have a very good friend, and he's a cop. He used to be a cop in Antioch, and Antioch is a very, very uh, bad area up in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that area, but um, and so I, I pinged him a little bit tonight, you know, and and talked to him about some things, and you know, it's just very tough. I, I don't know if some things I remember from a long time ago when you used to talk, but I, I know one thing that that is really worrisome nowadays is that the cops don't go on patrol anymore. You know, they don't know the yeah. neighborhoods. They don't yeah. know the people in the neighborhoods. I don't know if you used to say that way back, but now the only time people, people, everybody, see police is when there's a problem, you know? Mm -hmm. And the bad cops are bad cops, you know? Well, he, 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 yeah. Stuff. Uh, I think uh, the day of the beat cop, the beat cop was a great concept because, number one, they usually lived in the neighborhood. And so they, everybody trusted the, the corner cop. And yep. he, the, but then we got to a point where you didn't have these beat cops anymore. What you started having were cops who were driving around in patrol cars. And the only time they ever got out of that patrol car is when there was some kind of trouble. Now, what kind of mindset does that put that cop in, those cops in when the only time they ever get out of a cop car, there's something bad going on? Their whole attitude about the populace changes. The old, po the whole attitude uh, from the populace about the cops change in that environment. And what we did is the police no longer are trusted as being guardians of the peace. Yes, wait a minute. First of all, Ray had his hand up, Phil. Yes. See these videos uh, of uh, this guy and multiple videos. I, I, I wonder why do the people stand there and take videos? I'm pretty sure that I and probably quite a few people here would uh, gather people around them and go up to the policemen and say, please, you need to stop this. I think there were some people they, doing they that. Were. that. There they were, were people they doing that. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you listen to the audio, they're standing there saying, the guy's not breathing, back off, back off. They're mm -hmm. telling him to back off. Oh, mm -hmm. he just was paying no attention. Phil, yeah. then tell exactly. me. Yes, Phil. Okay. For the last 25 years, nationally, police departments have been doing something called community policing. And uh, community policing does get them out there, puts them on bicycles. Uh, they uh, go into the different storekeepers. They get to know the people in the neighborhood. Uh, this, is, this has been the effort uh, nationally to, to create this. And, uh, you know, even though yeah. it doesn't sound like Mike the Cop uh, on the uh, – uh, you know, or uh, Officer Joe Bolton. Uh, it's this is the way uh, uh, police departments have been con conducting themselves for the last twenty five. In your case, they gave you a tricycle, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I have to admit, I've seen a lot more of that, Phil. But the, the, unfortunately, there's just a lot of bad cops still out there, and and the bad cops are making it bad for everybody else. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that, I, I'm going to. I'm going to. This I'm, shit here is just the worst part of it. I, I'm going to bring up something that will drive Phil crazy, but there right. is a thing that they call in, in the police business, a Wyatt Earp syndrome, in which a guy. See what happens is there are two kinds of people that want to be cops. One is somebody who wants to help his community and the other who wants to make up for the fact that he was the misfit in high school and everybody made fun of him, and now he wants to be a cop so he can lord over people. So what police work does is it brings out bad people and it brings out good people, all right? And that's fine that it brings out the good people, but the fact is good people don't stick around. They're so disgusted by what they have to put up with that what you're left with are the bad people. 
I mean, and, and police departments have for years been fighting this situation in what they call the Wyatt Earp Syndrome. These people that join the police department, so they've got a gun and they got a badge and they can be Wyatt Earp. And um, uh, they try to keep them out of the police departments, but it's difficult because police work does attract that kind of person. Now, it attracts good people, too, but I don't know that they're going to last in that environment. Well, now you can talk, Phil. All right. Uh, you know, I have found that in the 20 years that I was there, a lot of people came up either through the uh, community uh, programs uh, like the, um, uh, what do they call the kids? I, I, I just had a brain fart. Uh, in these uh, explorers. police explorers. Uh, explorers, yeah. They, yeah. they and uh, through the explorer program, uh, they, uh, they're what they, they you know, are in parades, they do stuff, they bring them along and they get to vet them. Uh, then uh, there's a lot of people that come in from the military. Uh, after they get out of the military, they had training, they have uh, a background. And, you know, there's, a, there's an extensive uh, uh, period that uh, you're with a, uh, a regular officer uh, called FPO Phil, training. Phil, it's nice to hear this nice uh, promotional announcement that you're making about the police department. But for all you're saying, the fact is that we've had too many of these problems across the country in which mm -hmm. policemen have done this sort of thing. They've sometimes killed people. Other times well, they've injured and maimed them. And, it, and, it, and they are usually black. What, yes. What, what, where I think Phil's going, though, he, if, let him finish. I think where he's going is what, what he's saying is that the, the police departments have gotten so... Uh, so uh, desperate to bring people onto the force that they're just pulling them off the street. They're not necessarily going through all these programs that will bring them up because I know that's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, they're most, pulling people off the streets to, to get them into the police department. Most, most police departments are understaffed because they can't get qualified applicants. Now they Correct, are. and they're just bringing them in, and you get some of these quote-unquote warriors, and they run them through the training, and they get them in there, and then now they got guns and we're happy. Yeah, Sometimes hold on a second. Brian's have, got other people have got their hand. What? But you cannot have 18 complaints and still be on the police force, especially for. No, uh, I agree with that. But you've already been on the police force to get 18 complaints. There's something else going yeah. on that allowed 18 complaints. That's or right. That's complaints. right. That's a different story. Yeah, true. There's something going on in that particular department that yeah. needs to be addressed. That's right. And that's why Trump put bar onto it, and they're going to address it. And but is that another is that another issue of not having enough people on the force and trying to keep people on the force? I don't know what I, I like that about Trump though. He proved he likes Negroes, he just won't rent to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're on your own. <laughs> yes, uh, Jeff. This looks nice. Nope, you're not getting it. And then Ray. Well, I have kind of two things I want to talk about. One is uh we talked to our uh, our, our black friends, okay? And uh, the, the one, uh, Pam, my, my wife's friend, she is scared shit about her son. Mm -hmm. Her son's like 30 years old, a very nice guy, a nice person. Uh, he, he also works at the university, uh, working on computers and stuff like that. They're scared shit that yeah. he's going to be killed by a cop. Okay? I, so, can't, I can't blame him. Yeah, you, I mean... I had a joke, but I won't say it. Charlie, come on. You you could understand yeah. that, right? Yeah, Charlie. That's why we have the talk with our kids. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But you shouldn't, yeah. you know something? You shouldn't have to... state of affairs, Charlie. You shouldn't have, ha you shouldn't have to give that talk to yeah. your kids. You know, that's the shame of it all. And not have my son get killed. Yeah. Uh, but this yeah, is I, happening. Th this is happening with great redundancy now. And in places yes. where you don't expect it. You know, you don't think of Minneapolis as being this racist town. I always think of more. But America. I got news for you. I walked away from Minneapolis knowing just how racist it was because I saw it with my own two eyes. You went, when I heard that you say that, I was always thinking like, I know this sounds corny, but my close, I always thought Minnesota was like a snowy 
type town, like, you know, middle of the road people. I would never think like how you described it. Like that was like totally adolescent. Like, wow. You know, I'm sitting there and I'm literally watching cars, car driving through the neighborhood with a guy shooting his gun out the window, white guy. Uh, and, and then uh, later on that night, women being propositioned. You know, He's definitely not Mary Tyler Moore. Alex, uh, no, no. And and I expected more out of Minneapolis. I heard about it as being this very liberal town. I mean, it was the bastion of liberalness in America. The DFL America. was famous as a as a political party for being that way. Can I say one thing? Yeah. Like when I saw the video of that cop, I know this is gonna sound off the wall, but wouldn't it have been nice to see somebody went up to that cop and just like bum rushed him a group of people? But you see, and just you took know, him right out. But, but you oh, can't. That you know, you know, this, 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 guy with a, like, this is a guy. Over. This is a guy with Charlie, a gun and a badge. Charlie, yeah. Would, would you feel safe walking up to those cops and telling them to stop and get off them? No, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd be, I'd expect to be killed. Exactly. Yeah, they had an EMT there. The lady <laughs> kept saying, "Let me let at least take his pulse." She said that 16 times. She said to the one cop. Wow. And then there was another guy who was there who kept telling him, too, he says he can't breathe. There are people saying that the guy was just staring at those guys down while he dug his neck, his knee into his neck. You know, like in the movies where they cut the artery right here? Before that's where, that's yeah. where his knee was. His knee was cutting off the circulation yeah. to his brain. How did they not take this guy away and just arrest him right there? He was able to Hannity, walk away from that. Even Hannity, I switched on Hannity at six. Even Hannity was talking bad about the situation, and I was waiting for him to say "but," but, and they kept just talking bad about you know how bad and disgusting that. Was. If that was his civilian, they would have shot the guy. Oh yeah, well yeah, uh, yes, uh, Ray. Yeah, so like if you watch MMA and they do the chokeholds and the guy passes yeah. out, immediately get him off because if if they, if he goes on like that, you lose oxygen you, to your brain and you die. Yeah, he's done. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so, I mean, and that's what happened to the guy in Brooklyn, too, who was selling the cigarettes, I think. The big guy. Uh, the, hey, hey, Garner, the what was, it, what was his name? Uh, just, he just kept yeah. choking him, and he died. He said, I can't breathe. Yep. Yeah. yeah it's, well, it's not, it's no air, it's no uh, blood. Cuts yeah. off. It's the carotid artery. Okay, there. here's the part I don't get, okay? And uh, somebody, uh, Charlie, maybe you can explain to me. Uh, I understand burning down buildings. When you're mad like this, if you've gone through this for years, as as these people have in Minneapolis, and I know they've been going through it because I saw it with my own two eyes. Okay, uh, I can see the rage that makes them burn down buildings, torch police cars. I understand that, and I'm good with that. These people are insured anyway, so they're going to get to put their building right back up. Here's what I don't get: I understand your rage. I understand you taking out your rage. What does looting have to do with it? Well, you can get an Xbox out of it. What the heck? Yeah, what the <laughs> heck? Joking. That's a whole different segment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So, explain this to me, though. What, what's going through the minds of those people that they're going to take advantage of what is rage yeah. to go steal? Uh, Phil, I'm not asking you. I'm asking Charlie. I have the answer. Uh, no, well, you don't have the answer, uh, Phil, because you're white. Not. I don't have the answer because I'm white. But Charlie's black. Charlie can give me some answers here. You don't have the answer. Phil, <laughs> please, have more respect for Charlie than that. <laughs> yes. That's the, the people who are looting are hmm. not looting because they're angry at what happened. They're, they're selfish people that, that see an opportunity to get something for free and they grab it. Does that make you mad as a black person to see somebody yeah. do that in this situation? I mean, you can understand yeah. the burning down of a building, right? You can understand the torching of a police car, right? I mean, it, excusable yeah. out of rage, all right? But looting, you know, I saw some person running out with it looked like board games. And what I'm going, you, what you, yeah, I mean, what does that have to do with this? And uh, it's disrespect no. for the situation. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, there's no reason to steal. Yeah. Yes, Phil, what, you've had your hand up. Wait a minute, let's uh, Phil. Uh, when, when there's uh, situations like this, 
It's, it's called an exigent circumstance, and people think that the rules don't apply to them uh, when there's uh, these kinds of emergencies or exigent circumstances. Uh, and it's, it's quite common that that's the way society reacts to these kinds of situations. They think that the rules don't apply, and that's why they do it. It's happened many times. Look at the Watts riots. Uh, you know, uh, there's been uh, tons of riots, and, and a lot of the times it's it's because of this personality issue of exigent circumstance. Mm -hmm. um, I put on I put on Facebook last night. I wanted to talk about it last night, but well, I put it on there last night that you know, for my kids, I mean, the racism talk is as important as the birds and the bees. You know, and, and it's something that I, I've been getting some stuff together for them from, from Ahmad Aubrey, the, the gentleman who was jogging last week and got shot oh. by those two guys that, that, that hunted him down, basically, and shot him. And then you have the lady who's in Central Park, right, where she started calling the cops and saying, oh, there's a black man being aggressive to me. And the guy was filming all the time, and he was, he was like 30, 40 feet away from her because he was telling her when he was bird watching, telling her, you know, put your dog on the leash. Well, he's choking the dog. She's choking the dog. What was that? She was, oh, she was choking the dog. She's oh, yeah. Hanging I, yeah. The damn dog. Yeah. Ray? Yeah, uh, there was also a woman, I think, two weeks ago who, who, who was shot in her own bed. Like, they were, the, the, the police came in, a, a black woman, and, and shot her in the bed because they thought she was a drug person. And, uh, they were in the wrong house. The things that bug me about the looting, what bugs me about the looting, I could care less about Target. They got insurance. They're going to get everything back. What bothers me is it's going to give racists uh, a reason for saying, see, look what they're doing. See? Yeah. That's, they're that's what bothers me is even all the, all the violence and, the, and the, the, the fire burning and everything else. If they could just have a nice a, 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 a protest, you know, a quiet protest and, you know, do what they got to do, without burning down buildings and busting down walls and everything else, if they could do that, they'd get a lot more respect. That's what I think would happen. You know, that they would get a lot more respect uh, for what was going on. You know, make all the noise they want, but don't burn down the buildings. Don't bust down the walls. Yeah, but and, I, can, I can understand, I don't Kevin. understand the rage I, 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 because that's I, just what I, I, fuels I, the fire about, you know, I, see I, what they do, see what they do. That's that's what bothers me. I understand the rage because if you if this has been I understand the rage. If this has been a normal practice in your community for years, you finally have had it, and you it boils. No, out, I, I you know, get it. You know, yeah. get it. But you know, there was a group there that they interviewed, and they were standing in front of the cops, in front of the precinct, and they were black, and they were saying, "We don't want you guys tearing this shit down. We don't want you doing all this shit." You know. Protest all you want. We're just as pissed as you are, but don't burn down the buildings. Don't blow everything up. We're just as pissed as you are, but don't yeah. tear down our city. You know, Rob, you I, I don't it. understand that because it just mm -hmm. fuels yeah. the the racist fire. Right. You know, and, and everybody like us are sitting here going, look at look at the way they act when this stuff happens. Rob, exactly. you've been you know? you've been you've been on the quiet side tonight. Anything to say about this? I don't have anything to say about this because nothing changes. This is just the society. It's sick. And uh, the, we. It, this is just like talking about shootings. This is like it, it the, is. And it's I, you the know, same it, thing, and it's the same thing, and blah, 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 blah. This is human this being. This one just this burns me, human. Rob. I don't know. This ah. one just hit me hard. I don't know. Well, you know I, something? It, I don't know why it, it hit hits me hard. hard every time. But I, yeah, I, I keep it, saying, it how much longer does this have to keep going on before the police Until departments in this country aren't put on notice that this behavior will not be and, tolerated? And, and then what? What do you mean not tolerated? You're going to have no police? You let everybody go and you'll have no police? I don't understand. Well, if the police are becoming the criminals, <laughs> I don't know if... I'm yeah. saying, it, the, the, this, is, this is the... People are inherently racist. And people, are, is, is, they're going to react that way. This is an old problem. It's not new. We keep thinking that we're getting past it, but we're really not. Well, I, you know what it shows? What? I think yeah. it shows you just, and I don't want to insult Phil's police, because I know some police people not great, but I know them. Mm -hmm. This just goes to show you for the majority that nobody wants that job. 
They're getting the dredges filled of society. Yeah. I don't mean all of them, but a large percentage. The dregs of society and Phil. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, I mean, Ray. Then, uh, Ray and, normal people would okay. do this. Ray I, and then Jeff. I need, I need to disagree a little bit. I don't think people are inherently racist. I think the problem in the United States is we had three or four hundred years of slavery. Then we had a hundred years of segregation. In my lifetime, black people finally got legal equal uh, with the Civil Rights Amendment. Yeah. Equality. Quasi, and, quasi legal, Ray. Quasi, and on paper, I mean. Okay. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in France. There are all kinds of people from Africa in France. They're, they are treated no differently than white people. But I'll bet you if you look into Except France closely, Africa. you will find some group they're racist against. That's right. And in Canada, it's the French. Like they don't like the French, French are, are, are racist against the North Africans. But, but okay, not, so the, not I make my case. Against no, but they're not racist against. I know this sounds terrible, but they're not racist against all black people. The like British, the here. British have not been racist against blacks in their country. They're treated just like anybody else. But yeah. Indians are a different story. Yeah, like Indians. See, so I mean, what are we talking about? Endemic hatred in just about every society somewhere. I mean, yes, uh, yeah. I'm sure if we go to China, we'll find a group they hate. Yes. I think they uh, hate Muslim. the Muslims. The Chinese. Uh, you know, it's it, every where my wife comes from in the Philippines. She, it, it, they're they're prejudiced against dark skin people, even of the same race. Mm -hmm. If you're dark skin, you're you're, you know, chunned a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing. Because you don't have as much. Year I guess the problem is, is this is supposed to be the United States, and we're supposed to be the United supposed States. Be. Supposed to, be. yeah. But we're not supposed to be. We're not. I mean, I think that I, I, you know, I mean, I've had a certain beef against the police in this country only because I feel that I always was led to believe that they were here to protect me. And I really realized they're not here to protect me. They're here to protect property. Yes, Rob. When I was a kid, my grandfather owned a liquor store in Queens, New York, on the Queens-Nassau border, right next to Belmont Racetrack. The first oh, liquor man. store on Hempstead Turnpike, just past the track. Grew up in that building. Uh, you know, when you're a kid and your grandfather, that's like a, a life sentence. You spend a lot of time there. We had holidays there. My grandfather had a, a beat cop who used to come in, who was the nicest guy in the world. He left, his, he left one of his hats hanging on the back. We had one of his... Um, that they used to carry those lead batons, right? And he would just leave it there so, because that was a pretty dangerous area. And he was always in. He always looked after the businesses. He was very friendly. He knew all of us, let alone just my grandfather. Those people are gone. And police today are just very different. And it's not neighborhood anymore. He's it's right. That's a good point, Andrea. It seems like I don't even know. You're right. Maybe maybe there's a disconnect from generations now. Maybe we're failing as a society. Oh, we are, and everybody is messed up in the head because of how you're, they grew up. You know, it's interesting. Bad families uh, uh, and uh, let me oh, please let me go to G Jeff. But before I go to Jeff, l let me just say this: well, that I was talking to somebody I can't remember who, and uh, I was saying that I hear more and more people sound like Rob, sound like me, who say, "I'm fed up." You know, this is not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. You know, yes, this country is going to hell in a handbasket, and we have not lived up to our promise as a democracy. But anyway, uh, Jeff. I, I wonder if uh, you and, and Tony, who are, you know, real New Yorkers, do, do you guys know uh, Jimmy O'Neill, who is the head cop in New York City? Well, is he... Oh, I, I know there's O'Neill's, who own O'Neill's, uh, O'Neill's is a big family, uh, Georgie O'Neill, I know he owned O'Neill's, that could be one of the O'Neill's, because I know they had cops in the family, I didn't know the person, my brother grew up in one of the O'Neill's, well, so who, it's a who, big who, family, who, who, so they, you, the you, they married a ranger. Yeah, too. what were you driving at, Jeff? Well, you, I don't know, I, I kind of knew the guy as a, before he became a cop, he was like a sales guy, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, he wanted to be a cop, and he went back, and and he met the guy from Boston who kind of ran the police in New York City for a while. I don't know if you remember that. And he kind of took took him underneath and, and helped him. 
and he became Jimmy became the the head cop in New York. And I'm asking, the question is, did he effectively create a, a, a different environment in New York at a certain time? Yes or no? Well, you know, we've had all different environments of cops in this town. You remember during the Serpico period of just nothing but corrupt cops like crazy. Yeah. Corruption ran around. And he got the commission out of that, so. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the, the problem is that you're giving someone a badge, you're giving someone a gun, you're giving them authority. And there are people who are going to take that as a, as a, uh, a, 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 a tr public trust, and then there are other people that are going to take it as a license to steal. And I don't think they do enough. Do uh, they don't do enough psychological markups or workups on people. I think a big problem with our society is people are just so messed up. They beat right the that. shit in life. They have families from hell, and this is what happens. And I then the times are bad, and times keep getting worse, and people can't work, and they react. And, and and that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at a slow decay of society. I mean, it was on. those crazy kids robbing our class. You ever like we always had those kids in the class where the parents used to say, he's not a problem. He's in the back sniffing. You knew he was one step away, my sister would say, from one day exploding. My sister's a teacher. She sees her all the time. She says, this kid is going to be a problem. He's a time bomb. The parents ignore it. Mm -hmm. They don't care. Because they're they can't be bothered. They have them. People just, I mean, they, look how many kids, because there can't be school, aren't getting meals. So how are those kids going to grow yeah. up? Yeah. Phil, yeah. you look like you're falling asleep, like uh, we're ignoring you or something. We're not no, you, you, what, you know, do you want to say something? What? What? Why are you not saying anything? Oh, he's mad now. Because like, Why? Oh, uh, you know, you'll call on me when you want me to say something. No, no, uh, Phil... <laughs> For your well, no, we just want, we want you to participate. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it, it, you know, I'm letting other people talk. Uh, I I agree with some of the things. I disagree with some of the things. You know, uh, I I don't think all cops are bad, uh, uh, and I'm not going to assume. Well, that would that, that would be racist, or it's not racist. Minneapolis is this. This one is that. Uh, you know, you, you got uh, millions of people. Uh, in that metropolitan area, you're going to have racists and you're going to have non-racists. You're going to have good cops. You're going to have bad cops. You're going to have cops that make bad decisions. There, there are good cops that make bad decisions, and I think that's what happened. You, you know, think this was a good cop? You think this was a good cop? Look, there was three or four guys. One of them yeah. had one complaint. The other two didn't have any, and the other guy had 16. You know, there's something else, uh, and I don't think it's endemic, but they're going to get to the bottom of it. But I think that sometimes people make bad decisions. Keep his knee on the guy's neck for eight minutes. Uh, you know, usually if you got a guy cuffed and you got control of the guy and you got other people there, you stand them up, you put him, you pat him down, and you put him in the back of the car. He was, he was cuffed, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, he was cuffed. Yeah. Why didn't the other cops him? say, back off, let's get him stood up and put him in the car? I don't know. It, it could have been group, uh, you know, group mentality. Could have been, could have been that he exactly. was. Exactly. But let, there let, are let people me, there let me, telling him that he couldn't breathe. Someone. Let me put and it in a way. If you notice, there was yeah. a stream of whatever, and usually that's someone peeing before yeah. they die. Uh, well, I I that's, think a, that's it, an assumption, but that's usually what happens. I yeah. think at least three, four made a bad decision. Uh, they, and it, and it so far it's cost them their jobs. Oh, so uh, that, and the worst that's going to happen is there, you know, uh, all I'm saying is this guy is dead. There's no way of bringing him back, and that's uh, there's no penalty for what he was supposedly they thought he did. Let and me. It, it may cost yeah. one of them at least his freedom uh, and his life. Well, uh, uh, Jeff, I think uh, one of the problems is. With uh, uh, three cops, uh, one guy uh, becomes the decision maker, and the other two may not be good decision makers. They are willing more to just be passive on the whole thing. And I think it's one of the problems is that kind of a job is 
particularly when it costs uh, a racist issue. Man, mm-hmm. people need to be trained to do that. They need to, you know, it's not like the kind of thing that your mother teaches you how to grow up to do that kind of stuff. Okay, you learn that from your friends in the street and whatever, and a lot of the things you learn are pretty lousy. Yeah, and you kind of think, oh, it's okay to be that way. Yeah. Well, it isn't. You yeah. know, and and uh, I th- I think they killed this guy. Let's yeah. let's face it. And the other two guys, they watched him. Oh, yeah, that, that's horrible. Isn't it? Nobody can stop. They, his own people couldn't yeah. stop him. Okay, Ray. Yeah, I remember Rodney King. I think there were two or three oh. cops who were actively doing things, and I think there were eight other cops standing around watching. Yeah. It just blew my mind. Yeah. And, uh, isn't it true, Phil, though, that in, in the fire department and the police department, you never kind of – if somebody's doing something like that, it's sort of not taken well to get in the middle of it. Because you always have to stand up for each other and their your decisions. Maybe 50 years ago, but no. uh, today it used to be if, fire if, department. Sorry, it used to be if you pulled over a cop and he was drunk, you took him home. Now mm. you arrest him, you process him, you call your superior officer because you're not going to put your career on the line. The things have changed in in policing. It's not the same as it was, and okay. it's. Uh, you know, and there's not a uh, a bunch of uh, thugs out there uh, trying to uh, take people's lives because of the color of their skin. It just is bad decisions, and uh, you know, it, it it was it was not a good day for anybody. How often does this happen? Same kind of abuse, because that was abuse, right? How often does that happen with a white person? Uh, you know, the 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 crime uh, the higher crime areas have a lot of minorities in those areas because they're lower income. I I did uh, police work in a city that had uh, I don't remember what the statistic was, but it might have been at least 80 percent black. Uh, so I would encounter more black people than I would white people, but it does it didn't didn't matter. I mean, I was professional. Well, like, you know, when are when are we going to stop? talking about the term black people or minorities and just say that these are poor people that this is really a discrimination of 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 wealth it's uh, a statistic wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, charlie seems to be agreeing with me you agree with me on yeah. that yes i do you know that because there are some poor white people that have been abused too you know beyonce is not robbing a liquor store okay you she know, owns it. Yeah, she owns it. <laughs> exactly. I'll take two um, bottles of water. Yes, please. Ray, and then Phil again. Yeah. Yeah. So I just looked. At, I just looked at YouTube. Um, I looked for white white person killed by cop, and there's a lot of videos. But it looks like most of them are in pretty poor neighborhoods, rundown apartments. Mm-hmm. You just don't hear. You just doesn't make the news. So we I'm not see that make, stuff I'm on top. Excuse. I'm not trying to make an excuse. I'm just saying it does happen. There are there are videos of this. Well, it, it, this also is a story that, you know, I mean, I wish every time a cop did this to somebody, it was reported. It is not going to be reported unless it has what we call uh, legs as a story. And that's why MSNBC, for instance, is all over this story. Is it's, a, it's a sexy story. But this happens every day in police departments all across the country. And I'm sure it's a headache for some of those police departments that these people yeah. exist within their ranks. But what are they doing to make sure they don't exist in their ranks? That's the question. You know? So, anyway. So, quickly, uh, bef- what? Somebody just said that the uh, police precinct was overrun, and I'm looking at the news now, and it's on fire. Yeah, I'm looking at <laughs> Yeah, they, they blew uh, down the fence. It's burning and the whole crowd's seared, and then... You know, uh, look, what was the movie in the Bronx. Crazy. I understand. Uh, I understand the rage, and I'm going to tell you what that rage is going to get them. They would never listen to these people if they weren't burning down the police station, but they will listen to them now. Okay. 
Bronx. That was what it was. It was growing it was, what, are you, what are you saying, Kevin? You agree with what I said? Yeah, they'll listen to them now for sure. I mean, yeah. But it's too bad that they have to go to that far. Uh, quickly, I watched a, uh, uh, a film about uh, Gene Seberg, a drama about Gene Seberg. And she got involved with the Black Panthers. And they had some footage of the Black Panthers. And I said, you know, for whatever anybody thought of the Black Panthers at the time, if they were saying those things today, they would be mainstream. Okay? Because they were saying, you come into our neighborhood, you uh, kill our people, you beat up our people, and whatever. We're carrying guns. We're going to protect our neighborhood. And yeah. nobody, you know, and everybody was frightened. The uh, shitless by the Black Panthers, and they listen to those pleas, and they try to do something not for the Black Panthers, but for the Black community to kind of ameliorate the situation. Yes, uh, Brian. Uh, the, the somebody else brought up uh, the the protesters, the white protesters with all the big guns, the AKs or whatever they had, um, yelling in the face of those police. They said if this were to happen right now, and then you have a lot of black guys with guns being aggressive towards the police, mm -hmm. things would go down a lot different. And that's that's the black and white thing, unfortunately. It and seems the only way people in this country have managed to advance themselves is by the use of some kind of perceived violence or threat against the society at large. Uh, that, that somehow we don't listen to a peaceful protest. But when it gets violent... We're upset by it, but we pay attention to it because we don't want it coming to our town. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, they always say unfortunately, is the answer, and it really is. Sometimes. No, it's unfortunate that we don't listen. Isn't it a shame? Yeah, it's a, it's a shame that when Eric Garner out here in Brooklyn got got strangled, that that wasn't the last time that happened. You know, but it wasn't the last time it happened, and it's going to happen again. You can bet your life. It may not be Minneapolis next time. It'll be some other town. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, we didn't even talk about Trump tonight. Uh, in, uh, we didn't George. talk about Trump tonight. We didn't talk about the coronavirus tonight. Tomorrow you can talk about it. Good. Probably tweet something yeah. crazy. Yeah. Nice that. for a change. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, although Don't tomorrow, like what we talked about, tomorrow night we can talk about Trump and his perceived feeling that he can stop Twitter from doing whatever they want to well. do. He wants to start his own page, his own his own company, Twit. Oh, a Twit? Yeah. Trump, Trumper. 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 Yeah. Uh, was, Twitter was bankrupt before uh, Trump started using it, you know? Tw Twitter was in sad, sad shape. They were yeah, Mr. I want and to where did, you, where, where did you hear that Just one, Phil? regulation. Where did you hear that yeah. one? Yeah. <laughs> Only when they benefit him, of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah it's just so, so ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you said that there was no uh, bigotry against blacks in France. Uh, well, what about the bigotry against the Jews in France? Well, everybody's got their. I mean, yeah, of course. Well, I understand the Jews. About World War II? The French are terrible. Yeah, I mean, the Vichy, the Vichy government, yeah, I mean, it was awful. Didn't I'm, the I'm, French I'm, just give up and war? Hey, listen. The Jews have always been hated everywhere, so, you know. And my and my and my my only question has always been, what are we doing that pisses people off? I guess they, you know, who knows? I often felt that if if Hitler had met Phil Meyer, he would have stopped there and been happy. Anyway, I like Phil. Bob, thank you for calling tonight. We appreciate it. Let me go across the screen as I see it here, not as I see it there. By the way, Skype has now turned into Zoom. Okay, I I have a I, I took a picture of it. I'll put it up on the site. Anyway, thank you to to Brian. Thank you, Phil, and you for you know defending the police in this situation. Charlie, thank you. Uh, Jeff, thank you. Uh, Rob, terrific as always. Um, uh, Tony, thank you. Uh, Ray, thank you. And thank you to Kevin. Uh, what you should do is all give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye as well. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Citizens Panel. And uh, tonight we had a, you know, it's been, it was hell getting them on, but once we got them on, I got a whole different picture here. It's like Skype has finally decided. They've got competition.
Anyway, uh, that's it for us tonight. Uh, we'll uh, be back again tomorrow night. Uh, stay tuned now for The Intersection with Jack Bishop. And you're invited to call that and join in on the fun. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll be back again tomorrow night uh, at 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night and stay safe.